Joining me now is Nithya Raman, uh, she's running for LA City Council. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, absolutely, okay, so why run for LA City Council? Um, I think we have a real opportunity in Los Angeles. Um, uh, I think there's an incredible amount of power invested in our city council in particular, but in city councils across America. We have only 15 city council members. Each city council member has 250,000 constituents. And we in Los Angeles have a weak mayor, powerful city council system. So our city council members have an incredible amount of power. And I think we have an opportunity in Los Angeles to push us towards some of the progressive goals that we're fighting for across America that we're just not getting to here. And so that's why I decided to run. Uh, and this election is actually an exciting election because for the first time, LA City Council elections are matched up with federal elections. So that means there's gonna be a, a much bigger voter turnout and a possibility to kind of engage people in the big questions that the city is grappling with in its future. So, um I want to get back to the city council and the problems in LA because they are numerous yeah. uh, in a second as well, the city's literally burning today. Um, but uh, I, I wanted to ask you what you were doing before this. Yeah, so I was the executive director of Time's Up's entertainment affiliate. So Time's Up was the organization that came out of the Me Too moment in Hollywood and beyond. And I ran our work in the entertainment industry. So trying to make entertainment industry workplaces safer and more equitable for women. Uh, really for all workers, but you know, it came out of the stories of women who bravely came forward. You see Harvey Weinstein get uh, uh, yelled Kicked at the out, other yeah, day. Yeah, I saw those videos, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that was uh, refreshing. <laughs> um, so, but why get into politics then? So you're, you're doing good work yes. on that. Uh, I, I noticed you worked in India mm -hmm. uh, and, and bringing transparency there. You're the city administrative officer of Los Angeles. You so what? 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 Why jump to city council? Yeah, I mean, like I said, what I was saying before, I just feel like we have, you know, we. I think in Los Angeles we have a real gap. I think a lot of people here think, oh, we're in LA. It's an incredibly progressive place. We don't have to worry about, you know, our city here. But in reality, if you look at some of the major issues that we're grappling with, not just in Los Angeles, but across. America, there's an incredible amount of progress that we can make locally to achieve our goals. And I think now is the time to really get people engaged, especially because they're so frustrated with their inability to take action nationally. I think they're watching the national situation play out. Hey, and they're thinking, we're in California, what can we do here? But actually, there's an incredible amount of work to do here. We have a massive housing and homelessness crisis here that needs to be addressed. We have a lot of work clearly to do on addressing climate change locally. Um, and I think there is there is an incredible opportunity here that we that we can take can, we can really take advantage of, and that's that's what it inspired me to run at this time. So I'm curious what you think the city of LA can do about the climate crisis because it's obviously affecting us personally. One of our co-hosts had to evacuate his house today. Oh my goodness! Uh, but I'm going to come back to that because the the one that thing that's obvious to everybody is the homelessness problem, right? And it has exploded uh, over the last several years. Yeah. And and LA has it worse than other cities, so it seems like there is something we're doing wrong. Uh, so what do you think we're doing wrong and how can we fix it? Well, I've been working on this issue for a number of years. I worked at City Hall briefly at the City Administrative Officer's Office. I wrote a report looking at how the city was responding to homelessness, and this was a number of years ago. So the number of people experiencing homelessness was much less. And what I found then, was that the city was really ignoring the problem. Uh, departments weren't coordinating with one another to respond to the issue. They were moving people who were experiencing homelessness from streets to sidewalks, to parks, to libraries, and just shifting them around. And for the most part, they were putting them in jail. So I found that the city was already, at that time, spending more than $100 million just addressing homelessness. And four times as much of that money was spent putting homeless individuals in jail instead of providing the kinds of services that they needed to actually get off of the streets. And I think this kind of policy is what we need to change, what we need to tackle. And the city has made some steps towards doing that over the last couple of years, but I think we could be doing so much more. Um, over the last few years in my neighborhood, I started a homeless coalition in my spare time. So I have two little kids, um, I was working full time at Time's Up. Uh, and in my spare time, I was doing outreach to, you know, to homeless encampments. I was trying to help people get connected to services. We actually built a one day a week access center in my neighborhood to help people take a shower 
and get access to a case manager. And I just started to think to myself, you know, I'm here and all the other volunteers that I was working with, we were doing this at nights, on weekends, calling case managers during our lunch breaks. If the people in power right now felt the same level of urgency that I did and my fellow volunteers did to really address this crisis head on, I think the situation that we would be facing in Los Angeles today would look incredibly different. And I think when you take a step back and look at homelessness as part of a broader housing crisis that's impacting Los Angeles and many other cities in California, I think we could have done a lot more to keep people in their housing. So we've seen an incredibly large number of evictions. We've seen something like over 500,000 evictions in just eight years. Um, we've seen a lot of people lose their homes and leave. And the people who are leaving are working people, people of color, immigrants, the kinds of people that we're fighting for across America. And we could have been doing a lot more to help them stay in their homes. I, I wanna press on that for one more sec. First of all, I gotta say though, um, anyone who, I don't know anything about the incumbent to be honest with you, okay? Uh, but anyone who uh, organizes a homeless coalition in their spare time <laughs> should be in government, okay? <laughs> uh, so Nithya for the city.com, Nithya for the city.com, okay, that's the website. Um, so, okay, uh, back to the homelessness yes. issue. So I agree with you, obviously, spending all that money on jail yeah. is maddening in, in misdirected resources. But I have to confess, I don't know how to solve the problem. Yeah. Uh, so, and LA does this, has this weird thing of skid row, mm -hmm. which other cities don't have, where they just jam all the homeless people into one area of downtown right. and nobody goes there. And I mean, it's just insane. It, it Why is. does that even exist? And then how on God's green earth do we solve it? Well, I think actually the existence of Skid Row is what allowed LA to kind of ignore the problem for a long time. The fact that a lot of people were concentrated in Skid Row and in Hollywood um, allowed them to look away from the issue in ways that I think are detrimental to us being able to address the issue over the long term. Um, I think now it's spread everywhere. I mean, it is the top issue on everybody's mind. Uh, and I think we need to be doing a lot more uh, to meet people who are experiencing homelessness where they are in terms of how they access resources and how they ac access services. So when we did outreach in my neighborhood, we found that a lot of people had never met with a caseworker. They didn't have a place to take a shower. They didn't have a place to get food. They didn't have a place where they could feel welcomed. They didn't have a place to access rehab or mental health services, all the things that you need to start your journey off the streets. And I think we need to do a hell of a lot better in getting those services to them in every neighborhood where there are people experiencing homelessness. I think we need to do two other kinds of things. One is we need to stop evictions and the flood of people in falling into homelessness. We actually helped more people last year than we ever have before. But because the numbers of people falling into homelessness was so high, uh, homelessness went up by 16% in the city of Los Angeles, and in the district that I'm running in, it went up by 53% in one year. In, in other parts of the country, they might be surprised. I'm not at all surprised <laughs> living in LA. It's gone up sky high everywhere. Yes. And so, um, look, I, I got to move on to another issue okay. because it, it's so important. I mentioned it earlier, but it, I, but I do want to tell the audience. Don't give up because it seems like it's a hard problem to solve. No. And a lot of times conservatives will say like, "Oh, they have mental health issues. And then as if that's a good reason to not do anything about it, right? And the reality is some of these problems are incredibly uh, solvable. And some of them have mental health issues, but not all of them do. Mm -hmm. The number one problem in LA is housing prices. Yep, People exactly. are homeless because they literally can't afford a home. Yes. So that we can do something about it if we just have the political will to do something about it. Can I just say one thing yes, on that? Which is that I, I, I just wanna add that the third thing that we really need to be doing in Los Angeles is to build the kind of housing that people can really afford. We've actually built more housing over the last few years than we have in past years. But almost all of that housing has been luxury or market rate housing, not what we need to be addressing this crisis. And I think our planning codes, the way that we think about how we're permitting housing, the laws and rules, and also how we're using city owned properties and all of the investment money that we're having at our disposal. We need to think about that and to use that in ways that are directly addressing the crisis that we're facing right now. And we're just not doing that. And I think if we do these three things, I think we can really address this crisis head on. And not just conservatives, but also 
rich folks and and a lot of corporate Democrats will tell you, well, look, you know, we build a, a housing for you know that is incredibly uh, for the incredibly wealthy because mm-hmm. that's what makes money. That's economics. That's that's the only way that it works. You guys don't understand it. You should read the, the history of Bernie Sanders as mayor in Burlington, Vermont. Uh, that's exactly what they told him uh, back in the 19, early 1980s, mm-hmm. and he said, "No, nah, I don't think so." And he did it a completely different way, and it 100% worked. Mm-hmm. So it's these things it's are possible. solvable. It has to do with the values of the people who are in power, and you have to have people with the right values there. You know? Yeah. So in the, we have limited time now, and this is now a really hard question, but. What can you do about climate crisis when it affects us so personally? Yeah. My kids' school shut down now. One of my friends is out of a home. There's it's 90 degrees in late October consistently in LA. Climate crisis is not something that's happening later. It's happening right now, and it's yeah, happening in exactly. Los, in California the most. Yeah. But what can a city council do about it? Well, I think in LA, again, we have an incredible amount of opportunity. We have our own municipal utility, DWP, that we control. And we can tell them that we want to get to 100% clean energy by 2030. Right now, we've set a deadline of 2045, which is too late. That's way more time than what the IPCC report tells us that we have. And we should be pushing them and using every tool in our toolbox to make sure that we're going to 100% renewables. And we can, if we think about using solar, if we think about the path to getting there, to reducing energy demand locally, there's all sorts of ways that we can get there. And then the second thing I want to say is that of course, these fires are contributing to our bad air, but we've had really bad air in Los Angeles. You know, this year, which was worse than last year, which was worse than the year, you know, year before that. And a lot, most of that is really coming from our car usage. And we have done so little in Los Angeles to incentivize people to get out of their cars. And we could be doing so much more. It's a perfect city for biking, for using public transit. And we have disincentivized that through our policies, and I think we could transform the way in which we're using public space in Los Angeles. Yeah, and if you've ever seen the movie uh, Who Killed the Electric Car, we used to have trams in, in Los Angeles, and the car companies and the oil companies worked together to make sure that they got rid of public transportation, mm-hmm. so we'd have to drive all around. And, and so these emergencies that we're in are self-inflicted wounds. Yep. If man created them, we could also fix them, but we gotta have the right people in office. It's Anithia. For the city.com. The links are down below if you're watching later or you on YouTube or Facebook. Nithya, thank you so much for thank joining you us. So really much for appreciate it. Me. Thank Such you. A pleasure. The TYT Plus app is now available on iOS and Android. Download to get more TYT content at TYT.com slash app.